Hello, welcome back to Dr. O'Donovan, Medicine Made Easy. In today's video, we're going to be discussing anal fissures, and we're going to be discussing several key topics in this tutorial. So first of all, we'll start off with a definition of what an anal fissure is. We'll then move on to discuss basic classification systems for anal fissures. We'll go on and discuss who is affected before covering symptoms and signs of an anal fissure, and finally finishing off by looking at some treatment options. So let's start off with a definition of an anal fissure. Well, an anal fissure is a tear or an ulcer in the lining of the anal canal, and it typically causes pain on defecation. So here in this picture, you can see the rectum or the back passage, and here you can see this line or split, which is an anal fissure. I'm going to go on in the next section of this video and just briefly outline the classification system of these anal fissures. So when thinking about classification systems, you can think about basically two broad ways of classifying them. So they can be classified on the duration that they've been present or the cause of the anal fissure. So let's start off with a classification based around time. So here I'm just going to write a couple of things on screen. So you can get an acute anal fissure, or you can get something called a chronic anal fissure. Now, if someone has an acute anal fissure, that has something that has been present for less than six weeks. Whereas a chronic anal fissure has been present for more than six weeks. So if a patient comes to clinic and they're complaining of the anal fissure, you can ask them about the time or duration that it's been present and that can help divide it down into acute or chronic. And that's going to be important later on when we're discussing symptoms and signs. So we'll just erase this from screen here and move on to talk about the other classification system, which is based around the cause of the anal fissure. So this again can be divided down into primary or secondary. Now a primary anal fissure is essentially where there is no underlying cause. A secondary anal fissure is if there is a clear underlying cause. So this can be something like constipation. It could also be due to inflammatory bowel disease, so IBD. It could also be due to an STI or sexually transmitted infection, or it could be due to colorectal cancer. So let's move on now and discuss who's affected by anal fissures. Well, anal fissures are common. That is the first important point to note. And they are typically occurring at peak incidence in people aged between 15 and 40 years old. However, they can occur at any age. Primary anal fissures are uncommon in elderly people and would warrant further investigation for an underlying cause. So here we're going to move on and discuss the signs and symptoms of anal fissures. The key thing is that someone's going to usually complain of anal pain with defecation with or without bright red bleeding and anal spasm. Now an external examination of the anus may reveal a linear split in the anal mucosa. Now, if you cast your minds back just briefly to the earlier section of this video where we discussed uh, acute and chronic anal fissure, so here an acute and here a chronic. Remember acute was duration of less than six weeks, chronic greater than six weeks, you're going to see slightly different clinical features. So starting off with acute anal fissure, well an acute anal fissure is usually superficial as you can see in this diagram here with well demarcated borders. On the other hand, a chronic anal fissure typically is wider and deeper, so that would be something that you'd observe on the clinical exam, and you may also, because it's deeper, see the muscle fibres that are visible at the base. The edges can often be swollen, and you may see a skin tag which can be visible at the end of the fissure, so typically in this area here. So in this section of the video, we'll just briefly discuss the position of anal fissures and the position based on whether the anal fissure is primary or secondary. So starting off with primary anal fissures, so those anal fissures where the cause is unknown, typically these occur in the posterior midline, so around the six o'clock position, although 10% of them can occur in the anterior position, typically in females, so the 12 o'clock position. Secondary anal fissures, on the other hand, so those with an underlying cause, things like constipation, IBD, STIs, or colorectal cancer, should be suspected that the fissures have got an irregular outline, they're multiple, or they occur in these lateral three o'clock or nine o'clock positions. 
Referral for examination under anesthesia may be needed if the diagnosis is unclear or if anal spasm and pain make the diagnosis difficult. So now just coming on to the final part of this video where we're going to discuss treatment options of anal fissures. Well management of anal fissure includes referral to secondary care if you've got a serious or underlying cause that you suspect. So things such as a colorectal cancer. Giving dietary or lifestyle advice to ensure that the stools are soft and that the passage of stools is easy, so trying to avoid constipation is going to be really important. And that's going to be your main first line point of advice that you're going to give the patient, so dietary and lifestyle advice. And that's going to include ensuring that the diet is high in fibre, that the person has plenty of increased fluid intake, and also things to aid the healing of the fissure, such as good anal hygiene. You can also offer simple analgesia, so things such as paracetamol or ibuprofen, in order to help the um, pain that the patient might be having. You can also include things such as soaking in a shallow warm bath, and a short course of topical anaesthetic can be considered for adults with extreme pain on defecation. Well, I've also included this photograph here, and that's of something called rectogesic, so rectal ointment, which is glycerol trinitrate. And this is for something where symptoms have persisted for one week or more without improvement. In this case, you can consider this rectal ointment for a short six to eight week course. For people with a secondary anal fissure, it's important to manage the underlying cause where possible, or refer the patient to secondary care. And if you're referring the patient to secondary care because of the anal fissure, then it's important to consider clinical urgency. So for example, if the patient has got a suspected colorectal cancer that is causing the anal fissure, then this is going to need to be an urgent clinical referral. And in the UK, this would be under a two week wait referral. If the patient has got a primary anal fissure, then you should review the patient at six to eight weeks. So for the people whose anal fissures have healed, then you should advise them to continue with their dietary and lifestyle measures to reduce the risk of recurrence. However, for people who still have an unhealed anal fissure at this six to eight week review, then you should refer them to a general or colorectal surgeon. If the patient is a child, then specialist advice should be sought if an anal fissure hasn't healed after two weeks or sooner if there is significant pain. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you did, as ever, please like the video. This really helps the video and also helps other people to find it. If you've got any questions, comments, or queries, leave them in the comments box below. I do try to respond to every single question or comment that I receive. Sometimes I'm not able to provide individual clinical advice because this is an educational channel. And also, if you haven't done so already, please, please do subscribe to the channel. I do release new videos every Wednesday and every Sunday, and we cover a whole host of clinical topics that should hopefully be helpful if you're a healthcare professional for examinations, or if you're a member of the general public, just to inform you a bit better about your own health. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something new, and until next time, bye.